Well, really, really appreciate you taking the time uh, at such short notice uh, to, to speak to us. So thank you very much. Uh, it's very kind of you. Um, and uh, basically, congratulations um, at the back. Yeah. Um, what was your what was your uh, thoughts after uh, after the event itself, after your run had finished? I mean, yeah, I was I was really, really happy to get the fun run. Um, I mean, I was just happy to really kind of have given it everything. Um, had to dig pretty deep on the last loop for various reasons. So I was just, I was really pleased to have done that really. I mean, my my aim going there was to just kind of do everything that I could um, and um, kind of give it my best shot. And that's what happened. Um, so I don't really have any regrets. Um, I can think of lots of ways that I could improve. Like I could, I could improve there. Um, but I mean, it's such a kind of complex experience in many ways it, it, yeah I mean it, there's so many sort of parts that the parts that make up Barclay that um I think um yeah for, for my first time certainly I was I was really pleased yeah yeah what what uh what kind of made you uh, decide that you wanted to take part in something like the park like anything in particular was it the um, unknown I mean I think it's like um, it took it. It wasn't like a, an immediate thing. It like I sort of knew about the race for a while, um, mm -hmm. and I guess people started asking me about it quite a lot after the spy in two thousand and nineteen. Um, and but I, I probably guess been slowly thinking about it for a couple of years, and then sometime last summer I suddenly knew I wanted to do it. And I guess I had to wait for that moment because it's not the sort of race you can do without really wanting to do it. Yeah. Um, and I guess why I wanted to do it, I think. Um, a bit like the spine, really, in the sense that I wanted a challenge where I wasn't sure, like, uh, you know, um, it, it, like how I could do, it was a totally sort of new challenge. Um, and with Barclay in particular, you know, the likelihood is that you won't finish and there's something kind of exciting about taking on something that's almost impossible. Um, exciting because you know that it's going to, like, really test you. Um, and um, also exciting because you know it's not absolutely impossible so that there is a glimmer of being able to have a chance that you could finish um yeah and that's kind of that's exciting it's uh, from a from a viewer's point of view it's it's uh, absolutely amazing to try and kind of follow the race because it's you know it is kind of a little bit behind closed doors uh in terms of how uh, quickly or how uh, much before the race, you knew that you were going to be doing it. Was it a few days before, or uh, in terms of uh, the dates and things like that? Because I think them... I think it was probably pretty much the day before. Really? So I'd sort of done like an interview with Innovate, but we had agreed that that wasn't going to get published till I was like till the day before the race, yeah. which is I think when people sort of start to post on social media pictures of them at the gate and that sort of thing so that seems to be sort of the accepted around then seems to be the accepted time to sort of make it public that you're running yeah they don't really they it, the whole thing is you know it's very much not the done thing to kind of talk about it certainly not publicly yeah. that you're going to run and um, and that's like that's part of the magic of it is that it's so kind Absolutely. of um yeah under the radar beforehand there's there's a real element of secrecy and actually there's some of that even like you know the course and things it's you know it's not like you have a very good idea of what you what kind of what to expect. Certainly, as a virgin, you don't have very little idea what to expect before you get there. Um, but as I say, that's that's part of the challenge and part of the kind of lure of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, it's part of the legend of uh, Lars and uh, and the Barclay, isn't it? Uh, very much. Yeah. Um, in terms of the when you arrive there and uh, registration and such, there, uh, what's the atmosphere like there? Yeah, I mean, I, th I thought everybody there was really, really nice, I guess, pretty focused, sort of maybe a bit of kind of, uh, well, there's obviously the kind of anticipation. I guess everybody's probably a bit nervous, pretty nervous. Because <laughs> it's, it, yeah, just the fact that, you know, it, it just it's just so different in the sense that you, it's not like you're just going to test yourself by seeing how fast you can run the race. It's 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 totally different it's to see whether you can finish it, and that makes it um, the likelihood, as I say, is that you're going to get to a point where you cannot do any more. And there's not that many races where you're actually at that point. You know, usually you you're at the point where you need to go slower, but you're not at the point where you can't can't go anymore. And um, whereas in the, this race, you kind of go in that into it expecting that that's going to happen or that you're going to get timed out, which is. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so probably every, there was a sort of bit of maybe, yeah, anticipation, excitement, 
maybe definitely some nerves, I think. Um, and yeah, just because it's kind of, there's the people that know what's going on and they're kind of probably more relaxed and then the virgin's probably more, more sort of, um, yeah, more nerves maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In terms of the navigation, it's known for its hard navigation. How did you find the navigation during the events? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, the map, the maps of the park aren't great. <laughs> um, it's like coming from the UK where I think we have pretty good maps. Um, like they don't show cliffs and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah. um, I'm, I mean, maybe they show absolutely huge cliffs, but like cliffs that you couldn't get down, they don't show. Um, so, you know, you'll be climbing up a slope and sort of, um, yeah, suddenly come up against this band of cliffs, you don't really know which way around to go around them, you just have to kind of take a punt. Um, so, and, and so there's kind of that element is the map's not that great. Um, and then obviously on the ground, like it's predominantly in kind of fairly you know like thick forest in that you don't really have views there's not that many places where you have views out mm. um, and that's quite different from certainly uk where a lot of the time if there's visibility in the uk a lot of the time you kind of can use the land the land around you the way that the hills form to kind of mm. orientate yourself on the map you can't really do that there so mm. um there it's a lot more kind of keep keeping tabs exactly on where you are and then using the compass um, yeah. and I guess then the other challenge of that is that in the um, in the forest if you're trying to follow a compass bearing there's various things kind of that get in your way like um, well you know there's briars on, on the ground um, and you often you do you tend to just go through them where you could but sometimes they get really thick and then then you try to go around them so you're not kind of because they just stop your progress and um because it, it's not even so much getting scratched it's just they grab onto you and you can't move so um so there's like, like that and then you have to go around these as i say little little kind of they're, they're boulders or little sections of cliff um that you have to kind of work your way around um so it'll be stuff like that and so you're constantly sort of de deviating off a course so that's why it makes it harder to just straightforward follow a compass bearing yeah. and you're also kind of holding on to stuff like you know you had poles i think a lot of people had poles yeah you know you've got a compass a map but then you're also grabbing onto things to pull yourself up on the steeper slope so that makes it again um you know it's not like you can just run along looking at a compass um, so those things maybe help make the nav more challenging. And then probably, like I probably made more mistakes um, on the third loop, well I did, um, but then I wonder whether some of that was tiredness, because then by then you've been running for like 40 hours, almost 40 hours and you've missed a night of sleep and I don't know. I didn't feel, I, just, I felt like from a tiredness point of view, I felt like I could have gone on um, and like done another 24 hours. So. Um, but but maybe that was having more of an effect on me than I was realised. Yeah. So all of those things, I think I think you no know, having to, and then there's kind of sections where um, it, like having done it before would really help. Um, I think um, so. Yeah. So those those are all kind of points. Yeah, absolutely. Build on that experience, can you? And adapt, change a bit uh, your approach. Uh, in terms of meeting Laz uh, for the first time, what um, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I really like him. Um, yeah, I really like him. feel like he kind of, I think he gets the reason that people come to Barclay, or at least most people, um, the people that kind of have an idea about what it's really about, the people that end up wanting to come back. Um, I think he's kind of created something that is genuinely unique, not not unique in the way that most races claim themselves to be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I like the fact that he's not really after the kind of, I know he's, he doesn't seem to be bothered by the, you know, it, it, it seems to be genuinely that he's interested to put on this event where it, it kind of tests people at their kind of absolute limits of what they can do and, and the sort of extraneous paraphernalia with the kind of media and stuff like that. He doesn't have that there and I really like that. It's just um, it's like a kind of, yeah, a bunch of his friends and, and setting up this thing and it's I, I, re I really like, yeah, and yeah, really like that. 
yeah yeah like you say it's uh, there's not many races like that you know um the world's the world's not like that you know these days so it is uh it is uh, a different uh completely different outlook that the race has got hasn't it uh which uh, which is genuinely yeah unique like you say there's not many not many only a handful of races probably like that in the world isn't it um if you could sum up the Barclay experience in three words, what would those what would those words be? <laughs> Talk about. Oh god, I probably need that longer <laughs> to think about that. Uh, you can throw as many words at it, really, if you if you like. You know. <laughs> I mean, uh, like intense is probably like it's it's like uh, yeah. It's intense, it's kind of um, non-stop, what are the words for kind of non-stop? Um, it's sort of, uh, uh, I, don't like, I don't really like using words like extreme, but it's it's hard. Uh, um, it's, um, I guess, kind of physically and mentally, you know, like, it's certainly like physically and mentally, um, like testing i'm not you kind of want superlatives here so i don't i'm, I'm no yeah. I'm, it's um, cool. uh, i mean i thought it was like it like a real adventure and um, for me it was like kind of yeah yeah i i do, um maybe we can maybe i can have a more of a think about the three words but no, um cool. yeah I know exactly what you mean, though. I know exactly what you mean. Intense, uh, amazing, like, um, uh, immersive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, really put you to the Exciting. test. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other the other runners that took on the race as well. Did you form um, uh, any kind of like? Did, were you running with anybody in particular? Did you do your own kind of thing during it? Um, so generally, virgins try to like team with veterans. I yeah. ran with. On the first loop, I ran with some people for a bit, um, including uh, a French guy that's finished a fun run and also done three loops before just outside from run time. He was super useful. Um, he was super, super nice. Um, gave me lots of tips because it's not just about going one way. It's about tips for going the other way. Um, so, um, and it was really nice to have his company. And then I also ran with the um with Thomas Gunderbeck who also finished a fun run in a very similar time um, and we ran together for about half of loop two and then on loop three he ran out quicker than me so we didn't really run together at all on loop three even though we sort of passed each other we must have I think he must have got last I must have overtaken him then I got last he overtook me it was sort of a bit like that and we ended up finishing pretty close together and started at pretty much the same time Realistically, it probably would have been better off just running together and like then yeah. helping each other out with the nav. But yeah. it's like you want to go, you know, you want to kind of get. I think he was moving a bit faster uphill than me, so I get it. He probably wanted to just move on as quickly as possible. It's just, it's, again, it's that balance with how much time you lose when you get yeah. lost. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's yeah. hindsight as well. Hindsight is wonderful, isn't it? You know, at the end of the race to kind of uh, <laughs> look at it as a, uh, you know, a bigger picture, isn't it? It was super nice to have his company in the night when it was like, you know, it felt it felt pretty intimidating the night because um, right, okay. it was just it was it was really wet. Um, you know, when it's raining that much all night, you kind of you bound to you bound to start to get cold. I was really glad that I'd taken heavy heavy waterproofs and like yeah. I had good waterproofs in me. I had quite a lot of clothes. Yeah, brilliant. Just because I've I've sort of experienced like having looked at what's happened in previous part because it seems like every year like a good chunk of people drop out just because they've not got enough kit with them and um, so i was sort of like well if i'm going to drop out i'd rather it wasn't that i was just not got enough stuff with me so i had yeah. like a bigger pack than most people probably um and i put all the clothes on when i got when it got bad so i it was actually i was actually warm enough all night um on but it was it was intimidating and it was kind of like the guy that I was running with Thomas on that second night, I mean, every so often he took his gloves off and poured the water out. Um, so I guess it must have just been running off his waterproof into his waterproof gloves. Yeah. So just like there's not many experiences where people have to have periodically empty their gloves out. Um, so yeah, that, that brought it home to me just how wet it was. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. Uh, your your coat, uh, it almost looked like a musto or something like that. What, what was it? A sailing coat? It was like it's a new. I think it's the new going to be the new innovate like hiking oh, coat. Right. So it's like more of a 
it's definitely a heavier coat than a than the running coats. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because um, I mean, it, it still feels fairly like for a, for a kind of proper hiking coat, it still felt fairly light, even, but it's yeah. definitely bigger. It's not like it's not a running. It's not just the standard like their running jacket. Yeah, it's it's, it's heavier than that. Yeah, yeah. it's also better in terms of the briars and stuff because I think the briars would have like made rips and in, in uh, like it, yeah, yeah car it probably easy. would have stood that better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so will you be back next year? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I definitely, um, I definitely not going to say no. <laughs> That's amazing. We'll see amazing. what happens. Well, um, I'll leave that open, that space open. But um, I think it would be, yeah. I, th I think there's, um, I think it's kind of, ex it, yeah, yeah. I'll leave that space. I'm certainly not going to say no. Amazing, amazing. Well, Jasmine, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk to us today. Massively appreciated and um, and well done on uh, on the bike. Thank you.